Hello and welcome in today's exciting episode. I will be trying a new to me jacket pattern from Vogue. It's perfect, 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 perfect. Perfect jacket. I'm making this out of cotton rather than tweed because this is another jacket pattern that I haven't used before, Vogue 1830. And it looks very Chanel-ish to me. It does have darts on it, so I was, yeah, I have been putting this off for a while. And it says it's fully lined, but I didn't like the way it was drafted, so I just drafted my own lining pieces. I'm also not doing the rounded corners on the bottom, because, yeah, I just prefer a square corner. Um, at least when the first time I'm trying it out, I just want to, yeah do something I'm familiar with so here we go here is the pattern here are all the pieces and uh, yeah I just um, wrote down the dart lengths in metric because <laughs> that's what I understand but now we are ready to cut out the pieces here they are I've cut out the neon orange uh, the structural layer so it's just netting and then on top of that, I put the denim weight cam, um, cotton. It's just the same piece cut out of one's a structural fabric and one's the outer fabric. So, and once I did that, once they were pinned precisely together, then I put the under sleeve on top. So I'm just going to, and now I've pinned this other side as well. And I'll pin that side with the edge of the upper sleeve. So now they're all pinned precisely and they're ready to be machine sewn. So I'll set them aside and we'll get out the, like the body of the jacket. So what we have here is the front, two front pieces and I'm just putting the dart in the cotton layer of the first of the front piece and it's big side dart so I put that in and then I pinned it and I drew the line on there and then I unpinned it and then I layered the two layers of the front piece together and then I just put the dart in again but making sure both layers were always together it's a really complicated procedure but as long as you sort of take your time and do it properly, it's fine. And once I've done the two of the, the left side and the right side for the front, now it's time to do the back. And the back has two small darts up at the neckline. So again, I just did them on the cotton layer first. I pinned them into place and then drew the line. Then I unpinned them. And then I put the structural layer on top of the back and then I just did the same process over again and you just you can't draw on the structural layer you have to draw on the back of the actual like on the back of the outer fabric so that's why you have to do it this way it is time consuming but what are you going to do so once they are all done it's time to machine sew the darts so once they were machine sewn and like so you machine sew them and then you tie them and then you pin them to the correct side so they go inwards or upwards for the side ones and next I pinned the two front pieces to the back piece and I pinned them at the shoulders as well at the tops to create the shoulders and then I machine sewed all the seams and I just reinforced so went over it again for the bulky bits where the darts were and now I've just turned it out so we see the outer jacket and I'm just checking if there's any puckers or anything like that. I love these leaves. I think they're so pretty. So um, I'm going to embellish this once it's done with beads and sequins in the same colours that are in the design. It's going to be so cute. Anyway, now that the jacket's looking fine, it is time to pin back the seam allowance on the torso of the jacket and also on both sleeves and I have to hand stitch the seam allowance down and I have to pick up the seam the seam allowances and the netting but I don't want the stitches to be visible from the outside so it's again it's going to take a little time but it's going to look fabulous once it's done well that was a lot of hand sewing here we go you, as you can see I just sort of stitched the seams allowance down 
on each of the seams and this is what it looks like from the inside it is a little messy the point of this stitching is that it should shouldn't be visible from the outside and it should be secure and it should hold the, all those layers together without crushing them or without being too loose so it does its job so this is what it looks like from the outside it's fine like you have to be up really close to see any of the thread but from far away it looks pretty invisible but it still sits properly and then I turned up the hem and hand stitch that down again so that you couldn't see it from the outside what I love about this is how you can see that abstracted leaf um, tropical leaf on the front in like a big sideways heart sort of thing it's a leaf and I do like that but I am concerned about the length of the jacket it's too long um, if you've got a regular sized torso and, and broad hips or regular uh, regular shoulders then I think it's fine. And this is it from the back. I'm just trying to show you the darts. You won't really be able to see them well until the collar's done because um, the seam allowance around the neckline sort of, it's hard to see what a jacket looks like until it's done. Anyway, so now I've opened up one of the sides and you can see where the line of the waist is. And yeah, this one on the left here, is one of my jackets and because it's cropped it is so much more flattering i know a lot of people assume that the longer some longer your top is the more it will hide i mean technically that is true a tent hides or obscures everything inside it but you still get the tent shape so um yeah anyway so i wasn't sure whether i should cut uh crop it more so um while I was deciding, I just decided to do some beading because um, I intend to bead, well, at this point, I still intended to bead this all over. So I just started doing that a little bit on the arms while I was watching something. And then I put this, pinned the sleeves into place and I was like, oh, what should I do? Should I crop the torso or not? Because it's much easier to do it before you attach the sleeves. And um, it didn't help me decide. <laughs> it does mean that I, I am questioning whether I'm going to bead this jacket. Because once I finish the wearable mock-ups, I invariably either bead them all or I um, turn them into a flower jacket. So now I'm thinking maybe this one will be a floral jacket. Anyway, I think what I love about this particular mock-up is the leaf, that leaf sort of painted on the middle of the front and also the ones on the back and if I crop it I will crop out the leaf so I think I will leave it this length and stop procrastinating because I've gone away and made some dresses in the meantime and um, beaded a jack a different jacket but now that I'm back I think I will just put the sleeves on as is so that I can maintain that the leaf print on the front in, in particular is the one that I like so yeah I'll go and do that now so before I um set sleeves I actually just put a sleeve band or a sleeve guard on it's just a strip of thick cotton fabric sewn um it's kind of the tailoring version of stay stitching so I sewed that on and it just sort of gives the shoulder better shape I'm just trying it out. In the other videos, when I normally make my jackets, I usually do two layers of netting there, but I'm just trying this one out. And um, then I pinned the sleeve in. I put the top, match the two top centers. Then I match the two bottom centers. Then I do the bottom half and then I do the fill in the top bit easing that top bit. Then I machine sew it, turn it out, check it machine sew it again and then clip the curve so like the bottom third under the arm and then trim it down so um just by about half not all the way to the seam line then i pin the it's always really difficult to explain what i'm talking about i'll insert a different bit of footage see i've pinned the seam allowance up 
So, but the seam allowance is obviously on the inside, but it's easier to stitch from the outside. So I wiggle my fingers. You have one hand on the inside, one hand on the outside, but you stitch from the outside and you get a better shoulder shape, shoulder shape. And then once I've done it once, then I turn it inside out and I um, stitch down the seam allowance again from there. Then you roll that seam in your fingers just to let the um, seam allowances settle. And here we are. Uh, those pins are just where I was thinking about cropping it to, but I'm not going to. But I left the pins in anyway. Anyway, so I'll just leave this here on the mannequin. And I will go cut out the lining and sew that up so it's a full piece. Don't forget to use a Microtex needle when you're sewing silk on a sewing machine. So I cut out the lining, then I sewed the bits of the lining together, added the sleeves. Then I sewed the lining to the outer jacket at the inside, at the side seams. Then I turned everything inside out and did the neckline, sewed that. Then clipped the curves and the corners, then carefully turned it out. Next, I top stitched all, all along the edge here. You can see on the silk the um, some of my hand stitching. The next step would be to turn up your silk lining, turn those raw edges under, and to hand stitch the them down. And then um, if you want to weight the back of your jacket, with a chain, you can buy them from the jewellery section of a fabric store like Joanne's. You just buy them on, they usually come on rolls. But um, yeah, here I'm showing you the beading because I'm still not sure if I'm going to turn this into a floral jacket or continue with the beading. The beading doesn't look the way I wanted it to look. Maybe if I, anyway, here is the finished jacket. And I love that leaf in the front. I think it's awesome. But I'm not sure if you can see, but my the front of my jacket, they overlap slightly. This is supposed to be a size six. And it's it seems a little, actually a lot big for me. But I mean, it is a vintage style Chanel jacket. That's what the um, silhouette they're going for. And they are baggier. So you could argue that it looks exactly like it's supposed to. But um, yeah, and that's it from the side and the back and the front again. So yeah, I like the sleeves. Um, as I said, the length is a little problematic for me. Maybe more so because I've got a short torso. Um, if I did it again, I would make a larger seam allowance around the neckline so that the neckline sits a little further back off the neck because I don't like it the way that it is, but that's just me personally. Apologies that I rushed through the last few steps. If you want to see me putting in the lining step by step and then doing that, sewing the neckline and all those steps in a little bit more detail, um, you can go to the playlist page of my um, channel and just click on the Just Jackets. There's a whole range of videos. The shorter ones, like the 10, 15 minute ones have a little less detail. The half hour and hour ones, they have more and more detail. So yeah, but I was just running very short of time and had to finish this so we can get the thing edited. So thank you very much for watching. I am so glad that I finished this. I started it right at the end of February and then sort of put it aside to do some other things. And I finally finished it. <laughs> I'm very happy. So now I can go and finally get on to my green tweeds and make those up into vintage Chanel style jackets. I'm very excited. I have been looking forward to making these for the longest time. Anyway, thank you again for watching. I'll see you later.